Also, if you're interested in composting with me or in learning more, you can check out my website, www.backtothedirt.com. That's back, the number two, the dirt.com, or email me at backtothedirt at gmail.com, or you can call me at 513-212-6955. Jacobs with Back to the Dirt. I'm here today at Simpson Farm, the Loveland Magazine office, and we're going to be composting some coffee grounds um, while I talk about my new vermicompost company, Back to the Dirt. So, so here at Loveland Magazine, they have this compost bin, which would be the more traditional type. It's thermophilic composting which is based on a cycle of heating up and cooling down and aided by microbes, the food will break down. So my business does vermicomposting, which is a little bit different. We have worms that break down the food um, and I'm gonna show you guys what that looks like. So I collect compost from local residents and businesses and buckets like this. And I have an indoor worm bin and so food and paper waste will go in. And here I'll dump out and show you what that kind of looks like. And it'll look something like this. And the food will break down, but most of the action's done by the worms. You can actually see this cantaloupe skin they've eaten up to the, to the skin. And here is a little worm. Ooh, this one's a little tiny one, we'll see if we can see him on camera, a really little guy. So that's a European night crawler, which is the type of worm that I use. There are seven worms. There's one that's a little bit bigger, but there are seven worms that are known to be good for composting. So it's not just any worm that you might find out in your backyard. Um, a lot of people use, will use red wrigglers, but uh, again, I use the European night crawlers. They're just a little bit bigger and they tolerate slightly lower temperatures. But after the worms do their, their thing, they'll produce worm castings, which I have some of those here. So worm castings and compost are similar but still distinct because it's two separate processes. Uh, worm castings normally are slightly higher in micronutrients, humic acid, and microbial life. Um, when they pass through the worm's gut, they're coated by microbes, in fact. So both compost and worm castings are great to add to your garden. They're going to add nutrients. Um, they're going to improve the soil physiology. Um, and a lot of gardeners will actually use them in tandem. So my business was luckily funded by Hamilton County. There's a grant that they have called the Hamilton County Waste Reduction Innovation Grant. So anyone located within the county, whether it's a community, a business, a school, a nonprofit can apply. Uh, there's more information about that at their website or you can call their offices. So currently my worm bed is located in Anderson in my grandparents basement and i have a little picture here if you can see um it's 120 square feet right now but hopefully will be growing and if you can look there it's um it's got some tin roof panels for the side and i dump the food in again the worms live in there i have a layer of bedding and so i'll add the food i'll add the paper i cover it all up and i have a mosquito net over it um, to help prevent bugs from getting in or out. And then I leave it and the worms do the rest of the work. So the worm castings that we produce can be used in a lot of different ways. So indoor plant enthusiasts can use it to feed their indoor plants, um, as can gardeners and farmers. People can add it around trees or with mulch or put it across their lawn and it will help again feed the plants, add nutrients to the soil and improve the soil uh, physiology. So worm castings are 
100% natural. Unfortunately, I can't use the term organic because that's um, regulated by the USDA. Uh, but they're non-toxic if, if you smell them. They'll have no odor. Um, and they're a neutral pH. They can't harm your plants. I know sometimes people worry with traditional compost about it burning the roots if you put too much on, but that's not an issue with worm castings. Uh, and again, so there can, there's no synthetic chemicals involved. So it's a great way for people looking to farm more sustainably or garden more sustainably, sustainably to take care of their plants and take care of their soil without synthetic inputs. So in my own personal home, I use the same bin that I give to my customers. Um, so this is just a basic five gallon bucket and worm composting is a little bit different from traditional composting. So in, in a similar way, you can't put meat and dairy in because that can uh, grow bad bacteria. And, and then also you don't want to put a lot of greasy foods in because the oil can float to the top of either the worm bin or your compost pile and make it go anaerobic, um, which will make it really stink. And then the one big difference with Worm composting is that it doesn't do citrus because the citric acid in, in things like oranges or lemons can actually hurt the worms, um, as can really hot or spicy food like hot peppers. Um, but otherwise, any kind of vegetable, any kind of fruit, um, beans, plain pasta, plain bread, uh, eggshells, paper napkins, paper towels, paper ripped up, they'll eat all of it. The big difference between the worm composting and the regular composting is, uh, the, as we talked about, the meat, dairy, greasy food, that applies to both. But citrus and hot peppers, that's something you can't do in worm composting because it will actually, the worms, when they eat it or when their skin passes by it, the acid or the, the spice can actually hurt them. But that's no problem if you do regular backyard composting. You can throw that all in. And then here I actually have one of my customer's compost uh shout out to lauren <laughs> um and so you can see an example she has some shredded paper some banana peels um working in compost you get very comfortable with uh touching food waste i'll admit we have an avocado peel um and if you can see in there some blueberries some coffee grounds so again if if you eat fruits and veggies regularly, if you make coffee, you know, uh, break up your egg carton. There's a lot of stuff that we eat and use in our daily lives that can be composted. And in fact, a third of the US waste stream or what's going to a landfill is food waste or organic waste that can be composted. So there's a big avenue there um, for reducing waste in the landfill. And that's really important because landfills, when food breaks down in them, they'll emit methane. Uh, that's because landfills, food is breaking down in a low or no oxygen environment, uh, unlike composting. And in addition to that, when you compost, unlike in a landfill, you, you get the compost product, which can help improve, again, the plant health, the soil physiology. There's a lot of other environmental benefits that come with that. For example, putting compost on your garden can help um, absorb storm water. It can also help filter out pollutants from runoff. It can help in the case of floods or droughts improve the land's resiliency. Um, you can also, you also see when you put layers of compost on farmland, they found it sequesters more carbon from the air. So that's one of the reasons it's a great tool in, envir in an environmentalist's toolkit. Um, for solving some of these environmental issues we're facing in a time with climate change. I'm a Loveland native. I graduated from Loveland High School, class of 2016, uh, after which I went to Earlham College in Richmond, Indiana, and I majored in biochemistry. Um, right after I graduated, I actually went and worked in a soil science lab down at the University of Kentucky before coming back to Cincinnati. Um, and when I came back, I couldn't find any agricultural science jobs, and so I decided to take this risk and <laughs> start a business that applied both my scientific interests, but then also my interest in helping out the environment. So here I have a little bag of worm castings. So this would be a great size for people who have indoor plants. It was something when I started growing indoor plants that I didn't realize, but they really do thrive better if you put 
some kind of um, fertilizer or compost that helps to feed the plant. So again, this would work great. And also this one in particular is my little uh, uh, token of appreciation for David. <laughs> Yeah, we're cooking with gas. Yeah, we are. <laughs>